Alright guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope you are doing well. Um, in this video, I wanted to quickly demonstrate um, Cloudflare access and uh, what it can do. Um, I kind of make these videos just as I'm working through various tech projects of my own and on the kind of uh, chance I might need to demonstrate to someone what I'm doing or you know someone might find it interesting. They're looking at setting up something themselves. Um, I have these links just to send out to people. So. Um, in the early stage and on medium as Daniel's uh, tech world. Um, so basically Cloudflare access is um, a very, very powerful and interesting tool within the Cloudflare suite. Um, what it can be used for is not necessarily what you might think. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of kind of classic uses that they're trying to say it can replace a corporate VPN. One thing you can use it for um, if you're in a much more simple level of technology is to use it to protect access to you know a certain web application for example it could be a self-hosted crm something on your on your public facing web server um, that should not be accessible to the public so i have this little subdomain here on danielrosehill.com called demo and uh, i'm just just using this as purely for demonstration purposes um, what i might do for example is create a little WordPress site here and for example if I had a portfolio of work that I was sending out to clients and um, I did not want you know the internet at large to be able to access it so in that kind of use case there would be a few different um, scenarios one might be you could look in cPanel has some security functionality you can create usernames and passwords that's a bit old school and one of the disadvantages there is that if you wanted to do something a little bit more sophisticated such as ac leaving um, only allowing access to this Cloudflare protected area to everybody in an email address like everyone in a uh, in a subdomain for example or at a domain um, that would be possible using Cloudflare access and when you're doing of course there's, there's also WordPress plugins there's various solutions but the beauty of Cloudflare is that you're doing it at the Cloudflare level um, rather than directly on the end server uh, for creating the security. So basically Cloudflare access, I'm just going to bring over the actual um, and let me just get up the access pricing as well. So basically you can have up to five users um, for free and that's across every domain on your on your account. Um, so for example if you have three domains protected in Cloudflare and one access policy each and each is one user then you're going to be um, that's going to run cumulatively um, so there is bulk pricing so Cloudflare access is free for up to five seats starting with six seats and above the following pricing scheme applies in US dollars per seat per month so what I would say is that um, this could get pretty expensive if you're using it for this uh, this purpose um, I'm using it to protect my CRM um, I did it for clients but you know if you have the budget to spend you know if you were giving access to 20 people um, 20 unique u email addresses um, each one considered a seat then you would be running up quite a cost of uh, you know a hundred dollars per month in just securing this one application um, but for more you know limited pools of uh, of workers having access or maybe it just as a simple case you want to have an uh, application accessible to a certain domain so that would be another example so basically um, let me just bring this over and I'll show you how it works so this is demo.daniel this is danielrosal.com you have a uh, login method and you can choose from a different you can use authenticated logins over here um, you know Google Facebook github um, I've just gone for one time pin so that means that basically people will be prompted for um, a pin by email you can, you can also put your own logo up here um, but uh, if you have a bunch of domains on your Cloudflare then this um, organization name and page is going to be shared across all the protected access applications uh, so that's just something to be aware of um, next thing you'd be doing is creating an access policy so let, let me actually apply this so I'm going to be protecting today demo.danielrosal.com and if you just leave this blank it'll function as a wildcard now if you are using this yourself for example my, self, my cloud hosted CRM I would recommend um, increasing the session duration up to something like a month 
and that means that every time you go on to it up to one month um, so long as you don't uh, clear your cookies uh, you will not be prompted to go through the authentication uh, process every time that you log in um, so let's just give this uh, policy a name so we're going to say the application is uh, client portfolio and it's a demo and uh, we're going to just give this a policy name too um, I'm just logging in here so let's say this is um, uh, let's just say this is a portfolio and we want it accessible only to one Gmail address and let's just call them DR test portfolio whoops test portfolio um, now what we can do here is um, um, allow it so you can have emails ending in so this is where you can create um, authentication for anyone at a domain right so you could literally have anyone if you did at danielrosehill.com any user that tried to pass through the authentication that has an email address ending in at danielrosehill.com will be able to authenticate uh, for example we could also set it at gmail.com or we can just add specific email addresses we can also add access groups IP ranges and everybody let's just in this simple example I'm just gonna authenticate Daniel Rosell demo at gmail gmail.com so in this use case only Daniel Rosehill demo will be able to authenticate and get access to this application. Um, now you can also create exclude rules as well. So you know you can have an include policy, everyone at Gmail, but exclude specific Gmail and have that run concurrently. Uh, but that's the basic setup that you'd want here. Um, advanced settings. There's nothing I found here that was of uh, of use, and you can have a logout bar. Um, just to add that up the top you don't need that so let's just do this one let's just make it a client portfolio and da and demo is going to be protected and only Daniel Rose demo at uh, gmail.com um, will be able to uh, pass through the authentication sorry I'm just getting some uh, some uh, new features here for for Gmail in the other monitor um, so let's go ahead and save this rule so this is now applied um, DR test portfolio. We didn't, we didn't, we just created the rule within the application. We didn't create an access group, um, and that is basically. Uh, and you can see that you're, there's going to be a log as well here. Um, this is actually across the domain. So this is uh, this is my address uh, accessing my CRM, and I can revoke access. So again, every uh, domain you have on your Cloudflare, uh, this access is going to be shared across them. Um, so I'm only using one seat so far this month um, because of my personal address accessing the CRM. Once I authenticate um, uh, with Daniel Rosal demo at Gmail to this application, that's going to count as another seat, and my seat count is going to be up to two. And remember, it's free only up to five. Um, so if we do a refresh, watch the magic happen. Hopefully, there we go. So now demo at danielrosal.com is a protected zone. So let's see what's happened. I've only allowed um, I've only allowed Daniel Rosal demo at gmail.com. So if I put in something else, uh, it should not pass through. So I haven't received the authentication. So let's this time do um, the one that is legitimate uh, the email address we configured Daniel Rose demo at gmail.com click on send me a code and give it about uh, two seconds and here we go so let me just bring over this um, I've now received um, login code for da da demo .com. it gives you a link and it gives you a code so you can either copy and paste um, this into the uh, into the bar or you can just use the one click link and when I click on sign in um, ah this was uh, not supposed to happen um, copy link location okay so that was the, um, I think the wrong I must have done something wrong in the clipboard so now I've gone through that and I have authenticated so as I said this is a really nice way if you're looking to protect something like your CRM just for your company 
or it can be used in the uh, small business application world in which, for example, you are trying to protect, uh, uh, you know, you're trying to give access to a domain only to your client. I've also used it for protecting a staging environment. Uh, so the staging environment is protected so that it's not uh, accessible to the internet. And when it pushes out to production, it's, uh, it's, it's fine. So now if we see um, access policy, if we just go down to the bottom of this, we should see there we go, that Daniel Rosal demo is authenticated. And if I click on revoke session, I can manually uh, revoke the session from the back end here. Um, and if I now refresh here, um, it might take a little while. I might have to do a hard, there we go. Um, I forcibly locked that user out. So you can still, um, you can still control access on the back end even after users have authenticated. Hope that video was useful and uh, if you have any questions I can be reached through my personal homepage at danielrosel.co.il. Have a great day.